Hello everyone and welcome back to more testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. I am here with the Monument Rocket and we are going to test it out with some new waterfall plume configurations that I made and also just check out that it generally works in 1.12 with this install and also see its frame rates because this rocket is very very large. It is 51,000 tons on the pad with its payload and of course its payload is the Saturn V rocket fully fueled. Um, so I guess this is my way of celebrating the 53rd anniversary of Apollo 11. Uh, we have all together uh, 101 nozzles here, uh, 101 chambers that are going to produce plumes, and that is one reason why it produces a lot of lag. We are zoomed in so the textures don't look great, but um, as we zoom out, it's uh, halfway decent, and basically, for those who don't know the setup of this rocket, it is using real-ish engines. Uh, they weren't engines that actually flew, but they were engines that were at least partly tested, and it is the RD-270s each on the boosters, so a total of 64 RD-270s out there burning UDMH and NTO, that's what we have here. And then the core is an aerospike that has around it 36 of the M1 chambers, M1 being a derivative of the F1, but hydrogen and oxygen. And there's also five extra M1 chambers in the center there. Uh, this monument engine was designed to be recoverable, in, but in the, on the monument rocket it's not actually recovered. So otherwise it would have the shield lower and the, that engine compart compartment close, but yeah, that's not relevant to the monument rocket because it is not recoverable in this situation. So we have the huge hydrogen tank, the huge oxygen tank, and then a second stage with 13 fully sized M1 engines, not the uh, truncated version that is for the aerospike. Those were very short nozzles for the aerospike. And then we have, of course, all the way at the top after the two sets of hydrogen and oxygen tanks. In fact, the Saturn V rocket weighing in, in this case, uh, 2,850 tons, though uh, a 3,000 ton payload should be fine. Our for forward load reactor doesn't quite fit the Saturn V rocket, unfortunately. Uh, go figure, but the fairing does. Yes, we have special fairings just for this purpose so that we don't have to use procedural fairings which won't decouple properly. It's tough to get anything on here properly though um, because we're outside of the... There, there we go. Obviously outside of the VAB you know we have to pop out and inside we are really really close to the rocket. So we're going to use the monument pad as well, the offshore platform that I have for the monument rocket, and hopefully it's correctly positioned. So let's see how this goes. Now, no plumes work perfectly with this rocket because the rocket is so big and the engines are so small and they're so numerous. Basically, plumes, whether it's real plumes or waterfall, work best when there's relatively few engines and you know the rocket is sized for them so you know a single core with a single engine like a Delta IV that's probably ideal here because there's so many engines clustered together the plume is not going to be very long I've tried to make it longer but we'll see and it also seems to be swaying a bit I've got it on a lot of clamps um, so it looks like things have shifted around uh, oh all the stuff from the Saturn V rocket is down here. Oops. No, that that would not be good. Oh gosh, it's swaying. I I set the clamps to infinite strength, but apparently infinite strength is not good enough for the monument rocket. So you know what? Uh, and there are 16 clamps on here. Uh, sorry, actually 14 clamps. Maybe we need 16 clamps. Yeah. Oh. 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 I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> create create a sort of wreck site here. Huh. Intra oh gosh. Um we've we've hit the speed of light there. Okay. Let's revert flight. We'll add extra clamps, but we have to sort out staging, clearly. Sort out staging. 
add a few extra clan I don't know if a few, oh, this is weird I don't like seeing it here um, there may be glitches uh, the the monument rocket is supposed to be the largest regular service rocket in other words uh, it is meant to fly regularly uh, it's not meant to be those one-offs that are supposed to get YouTube views I've used it many times in my solar system tourism series and yeah it is just a regular service rocket now uh, maybe we should just pull all those off and place them again preferably at regular intervals uh, maybe 24 of them I don't know what are the rules really okay so well um, okay so that is still the Saturn V rocket yeah, uh, they the launch clamps were supposed to have infinite strength. At least I had done that toggle to solve a different problem before. It is actually a very reliable, very huge rocket in 1.8.1. Uh, there seems to be a wrinkle in this version. It doesn't seem like it's going to be quite as reliable. It does not sway on the pad in 1.8.1. That's remarkable in its own way, but Kerbal Joint Reinforcement definitely holds on to it better than it did here. The secret to making it work and making it a regular service rocket is basically the fact that I made the parts and I integrated all the engines into those parts so that, uh, for instance, the upper stage with 13 M1 engines, well, all 13 are baked into the same part. Uh, and the stages as well, so the entire second stage is just one piece. That definitely helps when it comes to the lag. Okay, we should be good to go. We'll just have to launch quickly. Okay, uh, it's starting to sway. I see the, vo the velocity there. Okay, um, well... I'm just interested to see if... Uh, yeah, it's increasing speed. That's not good. Ignition. And launch. And we've already got some sideways moments here. Oh gosh. Good thing those things aren't collidable. Yeah, it's already a little bit sketchier in 1.12. But there's the plume for you. And the sound. Still very muted. I boosted up the volume quite a lot. I want I want an ear deafening rumble, darn it. I used to get that with the real plumes, so I mean at least th these are longish so that they don't look stubby like the real plumes do, but I also want the really loud sound. But you can see the rate we're going at certainly a lot better than most of the time with the monument rocket. I did test it with waterfall plumes in the previous versions and it performed very well. And it seems to be performing fairly well here too. Of course we have, you know, a lot of scenery stuff going on here as well. So there's that. Just just remember we're also carrying a full Saturn V rocket in there. So one thing we can be sure of, uh, the Saturn V rocket is gonna get even better frame rates. Well, there's the plume nearing 30 kilometers. Again, UDMH NTO on the boosters, and then it's uh, Hydrolox core. But the Hydrolox core is derived from the F1, so I've used the F1 sound. That's a pump-fed F1 sound configuration. But there's no avoiding the sort of stubbiness of it at this point. Okay, booster set. So without the boosters, this is the sound. Again, the F1-ish sound. I don't know if being Hydrolox would change it very much. The plume is supposed to be a Hydrolox plume. But not a particularly clean Hydrolox plume like the SSMEs have. 
It was more of a dirty hyperlock spoon. Very interfery, I think. I mean, after all, we still have 41 of those chambers there. Sorry, it was 105 chambers in total at the start, not 101. I mean, right now we're green, now that we've lost the boosters. So yeah, this thing can lift 3,000 tons to low Earth orbit, and it might be able to do it on a very consistent basis. Now, how obnoxious do we want to be with this is the question. Uh, <laughs> obviously we can build many things very quickly. But, uh, in fact, the burden this creates is that we don't have the payloads for it, really, very often. And uh, might have to craft something a little bit more substantial to justify its existence. Okay, it's the other nice shut-off sound, too, that pump-fed F1. And uh, F1 startup sound is monumental, of course. Here's the vacuum plume for these. Of course, they have the, they've got the really long nozzles too. But the uh, air spike ones, because I mean, it's tough with the air spike exactly to figure out how the plume is supposed to look anyway. We can separate the fairings, but I don't have it in the staging properly yet. But the reason I created the new fairings, the monumental fairings, was so that we could separate them. Okay, let's see. Off they go. I don't know if you consider it the most appropriate sound, but it is what it is. You can see the plumes and judge that for yourself. But there's the fully fueled Saturn V rocket again. Now with more frame rates than ever before. I have done Pluto missions with the with the monument rocket. Of course, during the course of the solar system tourism series, we sent emergency payloads to Mercury, and we've also launched some stuff to Mars with it, mostly supplies. You know, mostly the necessities so that otherwise we would have to do a whole bunch of launches with other rockets in order to get those off and the solar system tourism series is done during twitch live streams so that just takes up time where i'm not sending people to where they're supposed to be going you know supplies logistics are is the main thing in the series that's my main struggle but sometimes it helps to expedite for entertainment value now, if you have some other ideas of what to do with the Mind Rocket, I am very tempted. I don't know if real exoplanets can fit in this install, or whether it works anymore in 1.12 in particular. One reason that I liked 1.8.1 is because real exoplanets was always a possibility. That's the one that adds extra star systems. So, that is interesting. I mean, I'm a sci-fi guy. I want to go to other star systems. Now, with conventional stuff, it's tough to get to other star systems in a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of time. But I am tempted to see if the Monument Rock can send the payload to another star system or not. That would be a challenge. It might need multiple launches of the Monument Rocket to construct a thing. Which, well, now I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> now, now I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. And we are going to see how I put that to use. And maybe the Monument Rocket will be essential to that. Initially, the Monument Rocket was designed without those five engines at the center of the Monument engine. And so it only had 36 M1 chambers, not a total of 41 now. So in that situation, oh, we got some, oh, during the transition, oh, we're going down. We better lift our nose up here. Um, I'm talking away here. But it was initially designed like that, and so it was in that situation just barely able to carry a Saturn V. Uh, here we should end up with some extra Delta V because we have the improved monument engine. But uh, considering I made a little bit of a flub on our trajectory there, we might not be in such a good shape. 
so I'm gonna do crazy things to try and get our trajectory happy since we have the extra delta V. All I want is to make sure we're completely out of the atmosphere. We can't be. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can't be completely out of the atmosphere because we are still in the atmosphere right now. But we have almost made orbit. You know, in principle, if I wasn't talking away, we would have made orbit. So that is the test. I don't know what you think about the sounds on these engines. I have always been tempted to do an entire series just with the Monument rocket and just to be obnoxious about things. After all, like I said, largest regular service rocket in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, if you would like to make... I, I know there are bigger rockets out there, but they're sort of like one-offs. They're not like something somebody's going to launch every single time. So, yeah. I wanted to put it to use, but we'll have to see. And... Yeah. So, tell me what you think about the sounds and look of the plumes, since uh, everybody likes the waterfall plumes, so tell me if these are good waterfall plumes or not. And then we'll work with it going forward. Payloads, you can also make suggestions for. Those should be interesting. What can you do with a rocket that can launch 3,000 tons to orbit? Well, I'll leave that to you folks. And with that, I'll wrap it up. And this is what the stage looks like in orbit as the sun sets behind us and the Saturn V remains firmly affixed to it. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.